South Carolina has been one of the most popular states in the country to relocate in recent years, and in this video, I'm going to go over some of the areas people have been moving to. South Carolina has miles of beaches, many things to do, golf courses everywhere, beautiful antebellum homes, mild year-round weather, and is a great place to live. There are also some cons of living here, including the heat and humidity during the summer months, flooding, and more. You can watch my video about the pros and cons of living in Charleston for more information, and I'll put a link in the description below. If you're considering relocating to South Carolina, but are not sure where you want to live, this video is for you. I'll be going over some of the different regions, beach towns, their larger lakes in the state, including Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie, and more. Before we go over each city, let me give you a brief description about South Carolina. The state is separated into four regions, and there are pros and cons of living in each of these locations. If you're planning on moving here, you need to decide if you want to live close to one of the many beaches, lakes, the mountains, one of the large cities, or a more rural location. A lot of people that contact me about moving to South Carolina want to live near the beach, or at least within a reasonable driving distance to the beach. If this is what you're looking for, you will need to either move to the PD region, which includes the Grand Strand area and Myrtle Beach, or you will need to move to the Low Country, which includes Charleston, where I live. If you do want to live near the coast in South Carolina, you are going to be more affected by hurricanes than the other areas that are inland. I've lived in Charleston for just over five years, and the first two years that I lived here, we had a hurricane evacuation each of those years. Charleston was not hit directly by either of those hurricanes, but we had an evacuation because we were in the cone of uncertainty, which meant that there was a possibility that Charleston would be directly hit, so we had to evacuate. Some people did stay in town during these evacuations. The last few years, we have not had an evacuation. The low country near Charleston gets its name because it's very low-lying land, a large part of it sitting right near sea level. There are no mountains in this area. It is flat. So if you want to live near the mountains, you'll need to move to a different part of South Carolina. I'm originally from Montana, and I definitely miss the mountains. But there are also a lot of pros of living in the low country as well, which I will get to shortly. The upstate region of South Carolina does have a small section of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which is a part of the Appalachian Mountains. This area of the state will also have colder winters than the coastline. If you're the type of person that enjoys seasonal changes and want to see a little bit of snow, the northern part of the state and the upstate or midland regions may be for you. Alright, let's go over the most popular cities and areas that people are moving to in the state. Charleston. This is my favorite city in the entire state, which is why I chose to live here. Charleston is a gorgeous and historic city that is filled with antebellum homes that were built in the 17 and 1800s, and is often referred to as a living museum. Charleston is known for its amazing architecture, great food, southern charm, historic plantations and gardens, and has multiple beaches nearby. It's close to about 20 minutes from downtown Charleston. There are numerous colleges in the area, including the Citadel Military College, the Medical University of South Carolina, or MUSC, and one of the oldest and most beautiful colleges in the country, the College of Charleston, established in 1770. There is water everywhere here. Charleston has multiple rivers and tidal creeks nearby that are great for fishing and crabbing, it has the Charleston Harbor where the first shots of the Civil War were fired at Fort Sumter, and it has the Atlantic Ocean. This area is known as the Tri-County area and includes Charleston County, Berkeley County, and Dorchester County. Charleston County has some of the most expensive real estate for sale in South Carolina, but you will be able to find more affordable options in Dorchester County and in Berkeley County in cities like Somerville, Hanahan, and Goose Creek. You will not find any skyscrapers in Charleston. This is one of the most well-preserved historic districts in the country. I have heard multiple times that they will not allow buildings taller than the tallest church steeples here. So if you're looking for skyscrapers, this area isn't for you. As I mentioned earlier, Charleston is in an area known as the Low Country. It is flat with no mountains and is prone to flooding. Along with the hurricanes, heat and humidity, and other cons of living here, I still think it is one of the nicest places in the country to live. Charleston has a unique combination of history, culture, great food, beaches, and has mild year-round weather. I do love the winters in Charleston. You can even go golfing or go to the beach during the winter months. I just don't want to be here in July and August. Having said that, there is still plenty to do during the summer months. Everywhere you go is going to have air conditioning, and there is usually a cool breeze coming from the ocean and Charleston Harbor, so you can go boating or go to the beach. A lot of the neighborhoods here also have a community pool, and summer is a great time to go swimming, so I've learned to tolerate the summer months. If you're considering moving to Charleston and want to browse homes for sale and for rent in the area, you can browse my website at garrisoncharleston.com. Greenville Greenville is a very nice city with a charming and walkable downtown and a beautiful 32-acre park and green space located at Falls Park on the Reedy. This park has many festivals and gatherings throughout the year, and you can take a walk across the 345-foot pedestrian bridge located here, known as Liberty Bridge. 
Greenville has several colleges in the greater Greenville area, including Bob Jones University, Furman University, and Clemson University, which is about a 40 minute drive from Greenville. Clemson has had one of the best college football teams in the country in recent years, and has won multiple national championships. If you live in Greenville, you'll be about a three hour drive away from the ocean and the nearest beach, but you'll be very close to the mountains. Paris Mountain State Park is right near Greenville, and Table Rock State Park is only about a 40 minute drive. There are a few lakes within driving distance from the Greenville area if you want to do some boating, including Lake Saluda, Lake Hartwell, Lake Kiwi, and Lake Robinson. On average, Greenville will get colder weather during the winter months than the coastal cities. You will also be much further inland and will not be as affected by hurricanes as some of the other places on this list, since the storms usually weaken rapidly once they hit land. Greenville is also within about a two and a half hour driving distance from several large cities, including Atlanta, Georgia, Charlotte, North Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Asheville, North Carolina, and Augusta, Georgia, where the Masters Golf Tournament is played. Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach is a popular tourist location in the PD region of South Carolina and offers a 1.2 mile beachfront boardwalk, multiple golf courses, several tall buildings and skyscrapers, restaurants, mini golf, and plenty of fun things to do with the family. Myrtle Beach is part of a 60 mile stretch of beaches and city known as the Grand Strand area, which also includes North Myrtle Beach, Myrtle's Inlet, Georgetown, and Polly's Island. There are a few colleges in the area, including Coastal Carolina University and the Ori Georgetown Technical College. If you want to enjoy the outdoors near Myrtle Beach, the Waccamaw National Wildlife Refuge is located nearby. This refuge has miles of nature trails, rivers, and swamps. There is also a ton of fun stuff to do in the entire Grand Strand region, including some of the best golf in the area, the Family Kingdom Amusement Park, boating and fishing, one of the tallest Ferris wheels in the country, and much more. There is so much stuff to do in Myrtle Beach, but the city also gets a lot of tourists every year. If you're looking for a beach town with less tourists, you may want to consider a different location outside of Myrtle Beach. Rock Hill Rock Hill is in the northern section of South Carolina in the Midlands region and is located right near the North Carolina border. In fact, Rock Hill is only about a 30 minute drive to Charlotte, North Carolina, which is one of my favorite cities to visit. Charlotte is home to the Carolina Panthers NFL team, the Charlotte Hornets NBA team, and it is a very nice city with beautiful skyscrapers. Rock Hill is a charming college town with Winthrop University and the University of South Carolina Lancaster in the area. Carowinds Amusement Park is also located near Rock Hill and has multiple roller coasters and rides and is a great place to take the family. Rock Hill is a nice option for people who want to move to a more inland city in South Carolina but still have large cities nearby. If you are in the Charlotte or Rock Hill area during the holiday season, make sure to check out a town nearby in North Carolina called McGaydenville, also known as Christmas Town, USA. My wife loves this little town. Rock Hill is located near Lake Wiley, which is on the North Carolina border. This lake is a little over 12,000 acres with about 325 miles of shoreline. If you live in Rock Hill, you will not be near a beach, but the mountains aren't too far away. Columbia. Columbia is the capital of South Carolina and is centrally located in the state. Columbia has a large downtown area with some of the tallest skyscrapers in South Carolina. If you live in Columbia, you will be within about two hours from the mountains, the beaches, Augusta, Georgia, Greenville, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Lake Murray is also very close to Columbia, a 50,000 acre lake with about 650 miles of shoreline. Columbia is home to the University of South Carolina and the Gamecocks college football team. Most people who live in South Carolina are either Clemson Tiger fans or Gamecock fans, and it's a very big event for the state when they play each other. Some of the popular things to visit in Columbia are the Riverbank Zoo and Garden, South Carolina State Museum, Congaree National Park, and the South Carolina State House. Columbia is a very historic city in South Carolina, but a lot of the antebellum buildings are no longer there. During the later years in the Civil War, the Union General William Sherman marched his army through Atlanta into the sea and eventually through the Carolinas. During his march, Sherman's army followed a scorched earth policy. The army destroyed many military targets, infrastructure, and civilians' properties, and a lot of the buildings in Columbia were destroyed. However, there still are a lot of surviving historic structures in Columbia. The South Carolina Lakes South Carolina has a lot of waterfront property available. Along the coast, there is the Atlantic Ocean and many rivers and tidal creeks, but we also have some large lakes in the state. There are several smaller lakes scattered throughout the area as well. For example, a lot of the communities near Charleston have small lakes with homes built around them, including Colonial Lake in downtown Charleston. Not too far from Charleston, you have Lake Moultrie and Lake Marion. 
Lake Marion is the largest lake in South Carolina and is surrounded by a lot of small towns. These lakes also have numerous campgrounds around the lake and are great for fishing and boating. These lakes are a great place to live if you'd like to own a lakefront property within driving distance to Charleston. Depending on which part of these two lakes you're located, you'll be about a 50 to 90 minute drive to downtown Charleston, but there are a lot of closer smaller cities nearby, including Monk's Corner. If you want to live on a lake in South Carolina but be much closer to a larger city, Lake Murray is right next to Columbia and Lake Wiley is right next to Rock Hill, South Carolina and is also near Charlotte. Other large lakes in the state include Clark Hills Lake, also known as Thurman Lake, and Lake Hartwell. Both of these lakes are on the South Carolina and Georgia border. Clark Hills Lake is not far from Augusta, Georgia and Aiken, South Carolina, and Lake Hartwell is near Anderson, South Carolina and the Greenville area. We do have alligators in South Carolina, and it is very common to see them in the little lakes and ponds here, but it is rare for an alligator to attack a human. The Beach Towns I mentioned Myrtle Beach in the Grand Strand region of South Carolina earlier in this video, but there are many other popular beach towns in South Carolina. We have multiple resort-style gated and golf communities including Kiwa Island, Seabrook Island, Wild Dunes on Isle of Palms, and Harbor Town on Hilton Head Island. There are also a lot of beach towns that are not gated and have public beaches, including Folly Beach near Charleston, Edisto Beach, part of Isle of Palms, and Sullivan's Island. Even if you do not live directly in a beach town, you can live within a very short drive to the beach in locations like Johns Island, James Island, Mount Pleasant, and many other areas along the coast. There are even some beaches in South Carolina that you can bring an RV and camp right near the beach, including Hunting Island State Park near Beaufort and Port Royal, Edisto Beach State Park, and the Huntington Beach State Park near Merle's Inlet. Some of the beaches in South Carolina draw in more tourists than others, so if you're considering moving to a beach town, you will need to decide which area is right for you. I will be making a video about all of the beach towns in South Carolina soon, so make sure to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see that. You can also watch my video about the 5 best beaches near Charleston, and I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching my video. Feel free to contact me with any questions about moving to South Carolina at 843-769-1836 or you can visit my website at garrisoncharleston.com.